thank you very much for joining me um, chatting to you a little bit about the solstice specifically happening on the 21st of June 2022 so um, to me it's important to understand the structure of the year so after celebrating equinox and solstice time uh, four times a year I have really uh, come to reorganize my patterns of life and understand nature more so to me um, celebration of solstice is not just uh, an ancient rite it is not uh, just a pagan, uh, I suppose, uh, connection to the universe. It is a connection to the soul and the heart uh, because the soul and uh, the sun are the same things in astrology. And also your connection to the hours of the day, the daytime and the nighttime, the different seasons and um, the different seasons of your life. Um, are an important factor as to how to keep balance in the world and how not to fall prey uh, to inorganic systems and uh, those that are not uh, connected to the human uh, soul or the human uh, body. So I'm somebody who uh, never celebrates the new year on the 1st of January because I go by the natural systems and by the equinox and the solstice system. So when I speak of the new year, uh, it usually for me starts on the 21st of March, being the equinox and the time between Pisces and Aries. So to me, the ancient archaic system of measuring time by the sun is um, the most profound system and the one that has helped me uh, get myself out of the 9 to 5 and the one that has helped me thrive. So um, I'm not sure if this is something that you might want to do. But if you have instinctively uh, been looking for signs in nature, and if you are interested in following the passage of the seasons and the sun and understanding the earth through her natural rhythms, I definitely suggest understanding the equinox and the solstice times, which happen four times uh, in the year. And also, if you like, you can understand them by astrology and also improve your life and your life design and your... Um, day-to-day -day task by realizing what all of these seasons mean and also what it means to be here in a certain given time and space. So um, this is going to help you um, make better choices and make more organic and neutral choices in your life that you can sustain and achieve through without having to be uh, bossed by the system that we have um, running running the show today. So um, why I feel it's very, very important to understand the solstice time is to understand what it actually prepares us for and the type of measure or calculation that the relationship between the sun and the planet goes through so that you don't have to scatter your energy anymore. So when I talk about solstice, I don't just mean it as a uh, celebratory time or something to look forward to. I actually mean this is a very, very mathematical and uh, energetic measure of where we should be by now. So if you start the year on the 21st of March, you're starting it at the beginning of Aries. Um, this is where we begin as a collective. This is where the program changes. So if you look at the wheel in astrology, you see that Pisces is the last sign. It is universally seen as the last sign. If you see the astrology wheel as a progression of a life of a person, you see that by Aries, um, we should start things anew. So this is the newborn. And even in um, the Vedic uh, system of astrology, um, Barani, or like the, the birthing, happens in Aries. So this is where things start. Um, if you don't feel this is right, that is okay. Um, but I have to say, like, after um, seven years practicing this um, internationally on online, I have to say this is a very, very important part to kick things off. So if you haven't kicked off Aries um, classically and traditionally as the starting of the year, sometimes the year gets muffled. Why I don't believe people should celebrate New Year in Capricorn is simply because it is the 10th sign. It is the old man. So when we look at the astrological sequence is a progression of a person's karma or progression of a life or progression of a year we can see why it doesn't work simply because there is no need to start things young and fresh in a sign of the elder so we start the year on the Aryan 
sort of a cusp between Aries and Pisces, basically to show ourselves this is the beginning. The sun here is in a certain state. This is called the equinox. Um, in this time we measure spring in the northern hemisphere and autumn in the southern. This is very important. Um, this is where things begin. If we haven't processed the previous cycle, if we're still scrambling and scattering for results, um, we can't start Aries well. So if you follow my channel, if you know what um, what I do here, is I'm trying to prepare you for the next stage. Why I'm over-explaining this is I'm trying to give context to the solstice that will be happening on the 21st of June by helping you understand how the cycle works. So as we began Aries, um, we had all it took or what it would take to commit to certain things for our future, for our progress, for our timeline from that point on. So the best was already there. So the big punch, the big scream, especially in the Tiger year 2022, the Tiger year really did want us to help ourselves to more. It's a very ecstatic and maybe slightly dreamy because it's a water tiger, but very, very powerful and pushy year. If you don't push in the tiger year, you might get very little results and rabbit because after this huge raise of tiger, we have a very enigmatic and simple lulling the next year, 2023, the year of the rabbit. So here I'm sort of trying to help you understand how to do it. If you didn't feel like you did the best in March, April, May, June would have been kind of like a scattering. And for some of us, it has been because we have some undefined principles that we are still uncomfortable about. We still have some karmas. We're not sure which way to go. Our parents didn't perhaps fully prepare us for the world or they had karmas of their own. So if you are still feeling heavy and you're not just flying, there is something that we have to do. And uh, why I'm here basically is try to help you understand how to package the first part of the year. Every slice, you know, equinox to solstice, solstice to equinox, equinox to solstice, solstice to equinox. Every slice of the year, and there are four slices, okay, is needed to be metabolized before we go into the next slice of time, especially in this very energy efficient and flamboyant tiger year. So how to understand where you are now is to realize how you have prepared for the equinox time before the 21st of March. What did you do and how did you go? What you have been able to achieve and push towards in this first primary color sequence of the year between Aries and Gemini. And what you now have to resolve. So here we're going from the bot like from the bottom of the chart we're trying to measure out what work we have ahead of us then so like here we are in the first second third house of the zodiac okay that's already been achieved that's the primary color sequence think of it as red yellow and blue so this is where you basically get the best of you okay um that's where you had to be innocent and this is where you had to just go for it and sometimes being a little bit uneducated or a little bit strange or a little bit shy or a little bit crazy works because these are the children's energies um, Aries, Taurus and Gemini so we've gone through the first quarter of the year yes we can afford still to make some mistakes but this next quarter of the year from Cancer to Virgo to up to Libra is what we've got to look forward to so be, before the 21st of September you still have a chance to resolve these previous mistakes you know um, wrap things up if you have to wrap things up and also define and make exquisite that first push for life that you've managed since March so that means that all of these new visions and ideas can be metabolized and redefined or regenerated and then by the 21st of September, things should look pretty safe. Because after Libra, we are going to start to walk into mastery. You know, uh, that ends by the 21st of December, which is the solstice, the winter solstice for the northern and summer solstice for the southern hemispheres. And then inevitably we go into metabolizing all of that which we've known, we've come to be, to create a safe and quiet place to seed a new burst of life. So it's kind of like an undoing or a decaying energy 
between the 10th, 11th and 12th sign of Capricorn, Aquarius and Pisces that creates space and consciousness in order to melt down some of our choices, in order to speak well of our peers, in order to basically melt down our karma. And as the rabbit year begins, it slowly starts to melt into the tiger year. We eventually have this very new, great, and maybe even glamorous life for some people. If they've come to themselves, they've come to their senses, and they've found a place to be stable and safe, which is what rabbit is going to be about. So that big stretch that you have now and that big fire and the big ambition or that huge generative force that Tiger is naturally giving you um, is only there to basically balance out all the shadow, all that light, and inevitably come to a very tasteful and very safe and secure space, which is where March 2023 should really keep you together and organized. So I'm talking about these big cycles now also because um, I also want to understand myself what makes a good decision from this crux. So we are now going through the 21st of June window. Um, that is um, leveling up with the IC point. The IC point is the opposite of the MC point. So you see if you look at the chart we have the AC, Ascendant, Descendant, the IC and the MC. So um, MC is um, the mission or the purpose. You know, it's how you show up in society, it's what you're known for, that is what you've mastered. The IC is the opposite point to that. So the current um, connection to the IC is difficult. We do have fortune land on this point also, which is very lucky, obviously, on the solstice. Um, there is something that we have to do and dream and draw from in order to make it fine. I know it sounds very weird, but like inspiration, um, education, hobbies, crafts, ideas... Sometimes they hold us together to understand how we are really seated here and um, what we need it for. And maybe after the time spent, after the jobs done, after the money made, there is a warmth that the IC provides. Quite often people that have a very busy IC section, so the bottom of the chart between the third and the fourth house very clad, have a very incredible hope to give people that is beyond the normal world. So that means um, usually these people are really good at crafts or uh, hand-me-downs, um, collecting things they love and they want to share. This is a really awesome collector's window. You know, people that just uh, get themselves along to things and learn many different things without having to use any of them. So this is knowledge not applied. You know, this is um, not the job well done. This is like novelty stores and art for art's sake. So the IC point at the moment has got Eros and Lilith and Ceres and Sappho together with the Sun and Fortune there. This is not an easy time. And why? It's also because we have North Node with Uranus, with Venus, with Pallas, with Sedna also very nearby, and also Mercury like now uh, well into Gemini. It's a very, very difficult and kind of uncomfortable time. People are trying to fight for some scrap of hope. People are pushing things further than they should have ever been. And also I see that, also for me, uh, sometimes I see this, there is no real answer, no real hope in some places and we're still asking in that direction. So it's like I knocked on the door, I had no answer but I'm still knocking on that door. So um, there is a feeling or a dream or um, an ideology that is not safe for us. So here is the safest way to see this uh, solstice time. To me it feels like it's one of the best ones to understand when the dream is or isn't right. For example, you can play guitar for hours and it doesn't matter and it always makes you feel great. When you feel a real joy and a real connection to your home, because we're going into cancer time, and if you're feeling a real comfort, comfort in what you're doing, and a real stability and a simplicity, 
to what you're doing or what you have done recently, that's a really nice state of joy. So that's a really, really beautiful state of events. If you are looking at developing yourself further, try to tell yourself that story at the moment. That is the easiest story to tell. For a few people, we did have an MC illumination with the moon recently, with the full moon on the 14th of June. There is a huge idea, a huge castle in the sky. Yes, there is a huge dream or a huge design, a huge state of hope, but not everybody has that today. So this is hard. What is a tiger year? A tiger year sometimes tells you how it's done. If you have a mastery over yourself, if you have a mastery over the events in your life, if you are very strong, if you know what to do, if you are very, very well, if you don't have any competition anymore. Competition, a lot of competition might have been already dissolved by the time um, Gemini hit. So in these first three primary colors of the zodiac, Aries, Taurus and Gemini, some of you guys already have dissolved that feeling of having to compete. That's maybe why things are very normal and basic for you. If you have a certain type of ongoing emotionality or you have rumors about you or you're in fear of how you show up or you're not sure if you are able to yet, I think it's going to be a very, very um, nasty energy that some of us have to go through to commit to the right thing. So I feel that this toxicity and density that sometimes cancer brings up can follow us. Um, the worst case scenario is when we think we got to really fight it out to claim a little tiny space under the sun. Like we got to pay three times more than we should for um, a rental property. Or we have to make so many claims and so many chances to be able to somehow commit to that next state of affairs. Um, that's one of the worst things that I feel um, I've also done this year is tried. There is no point of trying. When you are a master, when you're masterful in this part of the year, it should just be an absolute normal thing. It's like, I'm here and I get cared for because I'm here. So by default, um, it's a very, very easy window to grow and to have hope. If you are a little bit lazier than usual these days, that's great. If you are meeting the sun and the sky on the solstice, feeling hope, that is great. If you feel very kind of um, maybe even like washed out and not needed, that is great because the icy point is in parts about being so casual and so normal and so neutral that everything comes to you. So it's not really a point in the sky to scramble, but we do have North Node illuminated with so many things happening. We recently had the MC uh, part of the sky um, shine with this incredible um, moon between Sagittarius and Capricorn. And I do definitely get it when people just are scrambling for results. It's like, yeah, great, great. I can sit here at home and wait, but you know what? I'm not going to get anything done. You know, so the thing about Tiger Year, now this is a little bit um, complicated for some. We do have to scramble. We do have to show somebody who we are sometimes. We do have to swing those fists around to get that next idea through or to make that money. But this is not maybe the way, if you think about it, like you don't actually have to compete against yourself or what you've done before. You don't have to push yourself under. I think sometimes um, people are raised or trained to accept competition or accept hardship as a normal, neutral way of life. And I also trust that most of us don't really accept or appreciate ourselves enough to see where we have already mastered or learned. And um, this is why I feel there is like a little bit of shame and fear in this time is basically because some people cannot accept their conscious predominant. Um, so dominance and being very good at things and being very, very masterful or just being very meaningful to people or alone to yourself is where the tiger year really wants to get you. So the first three signs of Aries, Taurus and Gemini should have already been kind of metabolized. Look, um, you're getting it. Look, these doors are just opening. Look, these doors are slamming shut. You don't need these doors. 
You don't need them. But we don't imagine we don't need them. We think sometimes as a people, we, we think sometimes that we need to pull all these levers and push all these buttons to get the right results. And sometimes where it's the easiest and when it's the most natural and neutral, it's not good enough. So um, the architecture of life can get messed up sometimes for some of us because we don't like that neutrality. Imagine being a master of just sitting down and looking at people. Imagine being the master of cooking the best soup or being the master of just being lazy and having things come to you when you want. So there's different types of masters. We don't all have to be karate experts. We don't all have to be fast talkers. We don't all have to be exquisite uh, minds. Like the point is that all of these masterful traits in you and your family alike probably are already seen. And also you have to understand that there is also something that happens with us. Why do we expect the unable to be yet result in life? Why do we want so much that which doesn't count? Why are we still um, going against the wind, going against the current? Uh, what for do we fight ourselves? And why do we gain all that power and energy and knowledge only to put it into something that doesn't matter or not get the best life results? And this is where family karma is important to see. So we are at the brink of cancer, family karmas. That means karmic activity with you in your body or in your home and also your habitual time, habitual karmas that are not the best, you know, so sometimes also our mothers and fathers have taught us to be a certain way because they thought this would make us succeed and it won't. You know, so for example, if you were told to put in the hours or if you're told to be quiet to get a result, if you were told to clean and cook and do all these things that you never really had to do in the end, if you were taught to be somebody, that's going to show up now. So this is how I'm going to work with myself, right? If you have been conditioned or made into a person or product that your family, your community, your schooling system, anything, um, education facility, anything, wanted you to be, and now you know that's not the best. There is time. We still have time. Um, where you can really grow during this time is understand. Like if you're having a very hard time in this equinox, you can understand which ways have I walked that didn't give me anything. For example, I tried this and that and this and that. I had nothing back. I spent all this money on this course. I didn't use the course. I tried so hard to be a friend of this person. I didn't feel like I got anything here. Now, this is important. Try to understand why you are still going, still talking, still sharing, still making and still speculating when you kind of inside already are prepared to get a bad result or no result. And um, why don't you see what by now, by the third sign, you know, by Gemini, has been like this. You know, I walk in, I get attention. If I want, I can make this happen. If I care, I can just swing a magic wand and it comes to me. So maybe you are very good at wise words. Maybe you are very good at presence and keeping someone feeling good and safe. Maybe you're so good at children, like taking care of children. Maybe you're very good at supporting a husband or a wife. <clears throat> maybe you're so very good at um, karma management. Maybe you're very good at money. So the best thing to do here is not to um, mistrust yourself or the selves that you have inside of you, the different phases of you, or the different ways that you see yourself, the way to do it is to basically neutralize all this inorganic stuff that you're doing. Waking up, doing the same thing again, not knowing how you're going to live every day, being in a state of struggle. We have to neutralize it. Just admit, I can't make money like this, or like this is not the way I want to be treated in my life, or this is not it. Understand it and don't be a fool. So sometimes people say, yeah, I've tried this for four years, it didn't work, but maybe another year and it will. It won't. So this is a hard yard um, to imagine. This is a hard thing to think about if you now don't want to do the work that you understand gives you very little. And then having time to perfect your life. Okay, like lighten up. Look, the more I do this, the more it works. The more I try this, 
the more bountiful and abundant I am. The more I sing, the more I feel. The more I eat fruit and vegetables, the better I do. You know, the better is my concentration, the better is my, my work. The more time and peace, the more hopeful and peaceful is my marriage. So you have to just see where you have had answers given to you all this year probably since the beginning of March. Um, maybe you had all of these answers and all of these um, experiences given to you for free. Maybe people wanted to give you things for free. Maybe somebody has slotted you into a very good and amazing group of people for nothing. Maybe you accidentally landed it. Maybe somebody gave you something that you didn't even ask for. That's the idea. Let's see what that means. Let's dig up those beautiful good roots because the bottom of the chart, Gemini to uh, Cancer, is your root system. Let's see how we are going. You know, let's see what you are given. Let's see how you are taking care of yourself. If you really don't feel good enough in yourself, if you're feeling very, very nervous and neurotic, take time. This is the global IC, so it's really good to meditate. It's good to accept your place under the sun. It's good to um, accept and respect the way that life has ordered itself for you. And maybe just to meditate on that which you already have given to yourself, to your heart. And I know it's very, very difficult for some people to admit, yeah, that's probably the best I can do. You know, or like, this is the best I can do for now. Tiger is about competence. Tiger, yeah. If you don't feel like you have really fully etched yourself out, it can take you down so much. So um, how to get that feeling, level of excitement, is basically to begin to feel better about where you are. Um, try not to ask any more of yourself or other people. Try not to compete for now. So this is a very nice window where you can feel power. And I know it's very hard to feel power if you feel you haven't done the job. And if you don't feel like you're doing the best you can, try to work out maybe your energy is going off somewhere without perfecting and feeding those beautiful seedlings that are meant to grow. Where are those beautiful seeds you've been planting and not even knowing you've been planting? You know, where are those beautiful people that like you? Where are those communities? Where is the good? Where is the goodness in your life? And it might actually be in places, drop by drop. And we sometimes don't respect those places. We have tunnel vision. So let's bring ourselves out of that. North Node in um, Taurus can sometimes give you a tunnel vision, tunnel perspective. Like, when am I going to get my degree? When am I going to meet my man? When am I going to have my child? So you want these things. And I've noticed this is happening since the beginning of the year, since we've been really in Tiger. More, more, more. My, my, my. Um, we have to uh, basically break out of these cycles um, of dubiousness and... Um, inconsistency and we have to breathe through it and just see where you have been done right not where you have been done wrong so maybe there are five or six mysteries that have been uh, claimed maybe you now have absolutely no problem talking to a friend where you had social dysfunction before maybe you have no problem breathing where you used to have uh, an illness in your lungs before. Maybe you have no problem um, getting up in the morning uh, where you used to feel lethargic before. Maybe you have many friends online where you used to only butt heads before. Maybe there is a lot now. Maybe you have beautiful clothes in your wardrobe you know how to wear. Maybe you're no longer energetically confused. Maybe you have time on your hands. Maybe you have been paid very well for something that wasn't maybe that amazing but it was good. So we have to somehow feel hopeful and feel grateful. So for some people, there is such thing as a gratitude jar, you know, and um, I don't have to tell you about that. It's, it's, it's very kind of like modern way of understanding um, how far you've come and the support you have in your life. Get a glass jar and put in everything that you're grateful for. It works. It works. And just put that jar somewhere where you can see it. And every time you feel difficulty or you feel very banal or you feel dark uh, or you feel like you haven't yet claimed that spot under the sun there is going to be so much more life and joy and there's so many more gifts and beautiful ideas to come and um, spaces to be in the world if you just take a look 
at the beautiful origami of life, you know, that is happening, you know, um, in the shape of this gratitude jar or in the shape of your home, something has to always constantly remind you if you're one of those people that is always feeling disarray and distance from source. If you're constantly in conflict with what is going on in your life and you're saying, no, 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 it doesn't work, it doesn't work. If you're constantly arguing, um, that is going to show. So that needs to start to close up. Now, how to feel good? Feeling hopeful. So sometimes a little bit of salt in a bag. I know this sounds really mumsy and boring. Putting salt inside a bag and then just holding that uh, pillow of salt can help you neutralize and um, alkalize your energy field. Sometimes crystals help, sometimes shopping for new things can help, sometimes a brand new set of sheets, you know, or just like a new couch in someone's house, you know, like sometimes it makes such a big um, change, you know, sometimes um, having more than enough to eat or drink, sometimes just reminding yourself that there is hope, praying works, you know, uh, ritualistic mantras and, and, and practice works, it definitely works for me, so maybe like taking a bath, um, using some kind of perfumes or oil, like peppermint or like orange or clove, just to try to remember that it's okay, it's all right, and then trying to surface all the best um, in your world and just look at it as a pearl that it is. Understand yourself as the gem that you are, you know, Gemini. Uh, we are at the end of Gemini here. So like understand the beautiful pearls and the beautiful gems that you have already generated in your world and try not to ask life for any more. You know, try not to push on, like um, try to be safe, you know, also the solstice is like, ah, we did it, especially the summer solstice, you know, it's at the top of the world feeling, you know, it's like the Ten of Cups in the tarot, it's like, now we got there, you know, now me and my family, or like, now us, you know, like, we, we, because Gemini is friendships, and then uh, Cancer is home and family, you know, so really understanding where you are wanted and needed. And this is something that is happening as a global disorder. People believe in a person outside of themselves that is far away. So for example, they think that somebody on Facebook or YouTube can solve their problem, but they don't trust the family and friends at home. And also there is a reason for it sometimes. People want to grow beyond what their culture or their collective or their families have provided or can provide. That is true. Sometimes that is so. It's a very, very difficult and uneasy process for some people. So if you want to, you can feel hopeful and blessed with what you have at home. It's like, okay, this is what I have grown in my yard. Okay, so since spring, something has popped up in your yard. That's fantastic. You know, since um, the beginning of the year, March 2022, I have done so much work. Or like, since uh, Aries began, I have made so many different changes and programs in my life. Or, I got rid of a disease. Me. Like, seriously, I gotta tell you. <laughs> I, I, I had a huge, I, I, I had a huge mind-body transformation this, this, month, uh, this time around. Um, so maybe like, try to feel happy about what you've done. And the point is not to be competing with anybody anymore. Competition from cancer to Virgo is a hard game if you don't really know what you're doing. Competition was very easy and cheap. Um, the first three signs, Aries, Taurus and Gemini, very cheap and easy to compete, very cheap and easy to resolve a conflict. Everybody's just a child at a playground. And then eventually, as we go from Libra to uh, Sagittarius, from September to uh, December, we have a very, very, very hard time understanding each other. If we don't want to grow what we ourselves are good at. If you don't understand what you are very good at, what you're strong in, um, that is hard. Um, for some people, it's about the body healing. So healing the body and trying to get in shape. I think that some people have to have that to get the most out of the next uh, couple of quarters of the year. So the next half of the year. You know, so we have to be very, very, very good and diligent. I mean, um, how you resolve it, I think, is your choice. I definitely feel that sometimes um, there is a certain phenomena that happens for some people. Um, the bull in the china shop. So feeling kind of claustrophobic and you start making ruckus, start making also friends where you shouldn't have them and start making trouble, start making noise. 
it's like a tiger in a cage. If you do live in a very small house with a family that you don't maybe understand or necessarily want to support, it happens. And then having these like ego attacks or uh, angry things happen, you know, um, having uh, disturbed sleep or disturbed behavior, that can sometimes happen because you are inside a small box and you can't expand or grow or learn or exhibit, exhibit your mastery. Um, that also happens sometimes. Um, so that is where the individual needs to be seen. I see, okay, I see we are going through, you know, this place between Gemini and uh, Cancer, this is the global IC point. Um, some of us don't really need to do what we're doing, but we're trying to cover up mistakes that we've made in the past. We don't want people to see us crying. We don't want to be unbelievable to another person. So conformity between Gemini and Cancer does happen if you don't know how to yet deal with yourself or with other people. So here we have to close off any toxic behavioral patterns and it's hard. So this is when you have to be very, very quiet and happy as you are to just sort of understand yourself. But if you do have like family members or grown children or your husband or wife, someone that is just acting out or if you are unable to be somewhere, Oh, this is really hard. This is the big truth. If you're just incompatible, that's really hard. Now, this is like one of the hardest things. Like, I know I should be doing this job, but it's not compatible with my life. You know, or like, for example, I know like I can build a house here, like, you know, in this part of um, this country, but I, in my, in my body, in my mind, something's going on. I know I shouldn't be here. You know, or like, I shouldn't be part of this team. I shouldn't be part of this family line. Very hard if you, for example, created a family or a community very young and now you have evolved and you're like looking elsewhere and you're like, I can't believe I have to be in this tiny box. I can't believe I have to be in this tiny job. I can't believe I, I can't grow past this, which is where the relevance is. And I think that quite a lot of us are feeling it. Now that's very difficult. If you've made some choices in the past, if you, for example, had a child young with a person that you don't even talk to anymore, you know, if you don't know where you're going, if you don't know how you're going and what is the future of your, um, of your child, what is the future of you, if it is very, very hard to get yourself together and organized. If you are a husband supporting a family you don't believe in, wow, that's really hard. So if we have this kind of like entrapment now we have to do things very easily and simply every day, every day, every day. So um, here, I mean, I'm starting a program, like I'm offering you guys an opportunity to see me in Peru if you guys want to do this. Chiropractic appointments, a very, very strong masculine yoga coach, a very, very beautiful massage artist, like artist. Um, very, very good to try ayahuasca, very good to try different types of plants. They don't have to be psychedelic. I have a uh, whole cupboard of plants I could share with you. So that's a way to try and make it out of that trap. But you see, we can't just blow it all away. You know, sometimes people can't just like push that button and flush everything um, down the toilet because we don't know how to do that either. So if you are between energies between rhythms and now I can help you I can fully see it for myself now what is going on as well um, if you are doing this if you are in between like that um, it is hard to see how but here you can find pleasure and dance so that's where the solstice helps us burn it all away with celebration so celebration like Spending money on beautiful things, like wearing a flower crown if you want. You know, dressing up for the occasion, uh, dressing well for your job anyway, going to that interview anyway, uh, being fun, saying ha ha, you know. There is something else also inside me, you know, awakening as I'm talking to you guys about it. Um, you can also afford to say, because we're only between the third and the fourth signs of the zodiac, to hell with the details, I want to be amazing now. So even if you don't feel the love for your family, take them out to a picnic. Even if you don't feel very good in your job, um, make it to the job on time. You know, wear the beautiful suit. Enjoy your day. So this is how um, to help you. North Node and Taurus. Fragrances. 
colors, beautiful clothes, beautiful scenery. Burn it out with like vigor. Burn it out with beauty. Burn it out. Burn that energy out with color. So that's when we have to have the most beautiful frock. Maybe you didn't think it would be now. Maybe you didn't think this would be the time. Maybe you're looking around, you're like, I'm not ready for anything. I can't do this right now. I can't believe this is what I'm living for. I don't want to do this. This is the solstice, you guys. And even though you aren't prepared for it, and maybe even though you aren't feeling good or fantastic enough about some results, we have to bring it out. You know, um, we have a Russian saying, "Что есть печи на So it's like all that you have inside of your oven, you bring it out to the table. So we didn't have refrigerators back in the days. We used to actually use the like antique these these really amazing um, ancient clay ovens inside the homes that would warm the whole place in the winter. We would use them also as refrigerators. So everything that you have stored up in your kitchen, just put it on the table. You know, so um, this is where we really, really come to shine. Um, no matter what, sing that song. You know, no matter what, wear that dress. No matter what, play that drum. No matter what, dance naked. You know, dance with, with your feet bare on the land, you know. I don't know how you um, may celebrate this this time of the year. It's your choice. Some of the time, um, a big smile and a big courage is all we've got. So this is like, if you want to know, this is the roots of shamanism. You know, this is what shamanism actually is. Uh, dancing in the face of danger. You know, not being afraid of another person's uh, fragility. Not being afraid of your own pain. Not being afraid of not having money. Not being afraid now. And it is a very, very right time to develop your art, skills, or talents that you don't usually show the world. It's like, you know what, um, I don't usually show this to anybody, but I'm really funny. Comedy shows. This is a very, very awesome time to just stand up and say it. It's a very, very good time to cook the most incredible elaborate meals you can imagine. Also, it is the best time in the world to show yourself now. You know, even if you don't think... It's very real, even if you don't think it's very important. It's like, I have come out of the closet, or like, I've come out of my dream states. You know what? Like, I'm going to howl the, the impossible dream out from my whole being. Also, I have to say, the 21st of December is the direct opposite time to the solstice. This is going to be the winter slash summer solstice, depending on the hemisphere. Um, on the 21st of December, it's the most shamanic time to program your world. So this time between Sagittarius and uh, Capricorn, it is coming. It's like a mirror. You know, solstice, the two solstices are a very shamanic, shameless, um, animal meets spirit time and uh, we don't really want to necessarily practice what we do here especially as we're going through this 21st of june we don't necessarily want to embed it into our lives forever um but uh, maybe we could you know so like for example if you want to start a new journey um, we are looking at the house of cancer i want to wear blue green and red every day i want to paint my face amazing colors i want to bring out that tribal jewelry um, this is very, very good for some people, you know, from certain tribes, it's really good to be tribal and awake to their tribalism. So, for example, if you have um, Indian genes, or African genes, Chinese genes, I don't know where you're from. I don't know where you're from and what particular region you're from. But sometimes wearing those tribal colors and those amazing things externally can raise your frequency so much. And we are going into the fourth house. Don't be afraid of your ancestry and experiencing life through your ancestry and walking out of that dubious kind of like incredible but sad sort of commercial life, you know, like just try and walk it with us, you know, try to be free and live the dream. So it's about being a real person, not just like a name tag and a suit. So it's important to see what gives you power and uh, who you're praying to and what, what you are getting out of it. So the sun, the sun uh, walking towards just solar energy, understanding Pachamama, understanding um, the planet, understanding the different beings that live here and understanding how your body works. I mean, if you want, um, you can do spiritual, energetic and physical cleansing. You can practice art or drama with no shame. It's just important to take yourself out of that nook that you somehow 
gave to yourself. And this is where, this is why hobbies are important all over the world. Hobbies, arts and crafts, you know, making stuff. Just because we have to excavate you from being too down and too low on yourself sometimes. So you make sure that your family tree doesn't grow from sadness and drowsiness and, and depression. Um, another thing that works is adrenaline. You know, for example, um, outside my, my, my house here, I have a lake. I can go on a jet ski if I like. So like going um, on a kayak, going on a jet ski, uh, bungee jumping, um, anything. Like anything that will make you feel like you are living once. It's important. Now this is like really incredible alchemy. And that you don't have to perfect your life next time. So when you're dying, you're not feeling... Well, event, eventually, we all die in the end, right? So, like, you're not feeling, oh my gosh, so sad. Like, I wish my son or daughter would take over my business and carry on with my burdens. I, I wish I would come back into the same family and try... You don't need to come back to the same life. So the cycle of, um, creatively speaking, incarnations has to start to fade out. You know, I can give myself more. You know, I can be more. You know, it's not just about like, say, day in, day out, trying to practice whatever. We have more. You know, in the world than just these practices. We have much more in the world than just these little dreams, these tired things. You know, I go to play the violin every day to get good. I go to play guitar every day to get okay. We can't do it this way anymore. There is another state of life. And that sometimes doesn't make any sense until you've reached it. You know, I, until you've come to it. It just um, takes more and more and more and more time uh, than we think. Uh, sometimes it just takes like twice as long you know, because we don't believe we can just enjoy and let things go. If you imagine this feeling of being sucked and being pushed into creation, like having to be in this house, having to be in this home, have to have to do this marriage thing, I have to do this thing, you know, this little part, you know, this little part between Gemini and uh, Cancer, which is illuminated now. So the solstice is space, the icy space between the two signs and having to be grounded in and ground into life. You know, trying to take yourself a little bit lighter and less seriously and enjoy. Also, if we look at ancient cultures, ancient tribalism, there is so much joy there. People just enjoy it as part of life. Singing certain songs, wearing certain colors, masks, anything. It's very light-hearted. And then trying to not crush yourself with meaning. Uranus is next to the North Node. Crushing yourself with meaning. What am I doing today? Why? I got to fix things. Mars next to Chiron. I got to fix my life. You know, the moon on the ascendant. Where am I going? So try to come out of this grinding in some way um, by just using your light for the future. You know, so it's like, actually, I want the masquerade. I want to wear every single color in the rainbow. I want to be that guy. Yeah, I want to be that guy. I want to dread my hair. I want to wear a crown. I want to paint my eyebrows like this if I want. I want, I want it. You know? I want it. I want. Um, that's not where you won the million dollars because it's not the that's not the point. It's like I want this dream. So um, that's not very easy for me as well because I was not raised this way. But imagine like standing like on Titanic. <laughs> that's, that's that's a bad analogy, Paulina. Okay, like standing on the huge ginormous cruise ship and just like laughing at the air, you know, laughing at the sea, you know, like enjoying yourself. You know, like, I want to be, like, strapped to one of those kites, just, like, flying over and seeing what's up. You know, like, I want to try. I want to surf. I want to use my body. I want to dance in the ra I want to be ecstatic. I want to burn out this emotion that I'm carrying with my ancestry. I don't want to, like, sit there alone every day. I want to free myself from that negative cycle that my parents and their 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 parents for thousands of years have evolved me into becoming part of. And then, if you like, 
you can just cut things out. Chiron Mars, just cut it out. Just cut. You know, so for example, I don't want to talk like this anymore. Cut. I don't want to be with this person, just cut. You know, I don't want to try so very hard. Cut it out. Cut. Cut out the long way so that you have something to do that you actually love. Thank you very much. I hope this has been helpful uh, to you. And um, all the details are in the caption below. You don't have to necessarily come to Peru to see me, but if you like, you can. <laughs> and um, if you have any questions, please ask. And also, yes, I'm open for bookings and things as well. Uh, blessings. Bye.